All right, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much for coming. Jazakumullah khair. I really appreciate it. The young and the old, male, female, Muslim, non Muslim. Thank you so much. We have some guests as well, so thank you so much. Uh, people who came from Canada, Jazakumullah khair, West Bloomfield, Toledo, Ohio. Thank you so much. May Allah bless you. And I pray to Allah this will be worth your time, Ya Rab. You know, we should not connect our success, usually, do not connect your success with other people's feedback. Generally speaking, now when you take feedback, how to improve, how to become better, what faults you did, that's important. But don't let that be your one and only measurement of your success. Because if your success is connected to what people say about you, then the biggest losers would be prophets. Now watch out. Rasulullah said, some prophets will come on the day of judgment. And be a prophet, not a great imam, a prophet yet receives revelation from Allah. Yawm al Qiyamah, each prophet comes with what? Their ummah, right? Their followers. Some prophets will come with nine. Can you imagine nine? This attendance is bigger than the prophets. But this does not make a prophet not good. He's better than all of us, yes or no? So my point being here, his success as a prophet, let me actually add to this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, يَأْتِ النَّبِي وَلَيْسَ مَعَهُ أَحَدٍ Even some prophets will come, not a single one believing in them. An empty room, subhanallah. But they are the greatest human beings that ever walked on earth. For yes, people's feedback, compliment, and so on, in general, in your life, is great. It's a great sign that you did a good job. It's a great sign, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. But you not receiving it, doesn't mean you have not succeeded. That's what, something we want to share with you all. May Allah protect you. Ameen. All right. Last session, inshallah, for this year. May Allah put barakah in it. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. One of the very common questions that I received from our last session was the following. Brother, I heard Angel Jibreel, alayhi salam, was involved in the drowning of Pharaoh. Is that authentic or not authentic? What's the story behind it? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every time you hear that name say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Lama agraq Allahu Fir'aun, when Allah caused Pharaoh to die, and that's it, it was his last, last moments, he said, Pharaoh, I believe that there is no deity worthy of worship except the ones except the one whom the children of Israel believe in. Yes, very long. He could not say, La ilaha illallah, he was like struggling and whatever. Arrogance still kicked in. Jibreel alayhi salam told Prophet Muhammad, I'm saying now thousands of years later. He says, Ya Muhammad, fellow ra'aytani. And Ya Muhammad, only if you, if you saw what I did. What did you do, Ya Jibreel? Wa ana akhudu min hali al-bahar. I grabbed the mud from the ocean the soil from the ocean, sand and water mixed together. And what do you do with it? I grabbed that mud and I stuck it and shoved it into the Pharaoh's mouth. Authentic narration. He was so angry for what Pharaoh did. He was so jealous over Allah and how he can be treated like this. He was so angry over Musa alayhi salam. And why did he see this from Pharaoh? So he grabbed the mud and he shoved it into the mouth of Pharaoh. But why? Jibril, why? He said, Makhafata, because I was a little bit concerned that he would say, La ilaha illallah. That Pharaoh may actually verbalize there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And because of him saying that, I was concerned. And you did rahmatillah. That Allah's mercy may actually come upon Pharaoh. Ya Allah. To those who know Pharaoh who has miserable things. Pharaoh classified as one of the worst human beings ever walked on earth. Pharaoh, the one who killed children. Pharaoh, the one who kidnapped women. Pharaoh, who enslaved an entire nation, Bani Israel. Pharaoh, who called the prophet Majnoon, insane, sahir, magician. Pharaoh, the one who killed his own wife and tortured her. He had a door that is slightly open. He could have. There was a chance. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Even though we know from the Quran clearly, Allah says in the Quran that it will not benefit you when you say La ilaha illallah when the punishment comes your way and ends your life. Like what happened to Fir'aun, Thamud, Qawm Ad, all these people. You know, Prophet Nuh, when the drowning took place, the flood. That moment, whatever you say, it's over. The aqab, the punishment has come. 
And I mentioned it before, for Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have two moments where your sorry will not be accepted. Please forgive me, it will be rejected. It is when the sun rises from the west, which didn't happen, or when your soul is about to depart your body, the last moments of your life, that last moment. For why to share this now is to, for you who says, La ilaha illallah, if Jibreel, who knows Allah more than all of us put together, agreed? He felt there is a slight hair chance that Allah may actually accept Fir'aun as a Muslim. Taban, he will be held accountable for what he did. And Allah, it's up to him to what, to what he can do and what he wants to do. What about you who says, La ilaha illallah? How can you give up? Sah? Agreed? How can you who says, La ilaha illallah say, Man, I'm a hopeless case. Every time I do the mistake, I go and I apologize. I go back to it. Every time I, I'm trying to quit something, I return back to it. You know what? I'm not going to ask God to forgive me. I feel like a hypocrite. It happens. It happens to the young and the old. May Allah protect you all and make you of those who have hope in Allah. Say, Ameen. You know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he talks about the mercy of Allah, he said, if one sins, okay, sayyat al dhunub would to fill earth, how bad are you? How bad am I? How many mistakes have you done? لو ذنوبك ملأت الأرض If your sins filled earth, do you know how many sins that can be? I remember one of my teachers, Sheikh Abdul Nasr, he did this. He, he taught us this hadith. If your sins would to fill earth, then he did this. Can I just take two seats? So he said, pretend every sin is a chair. Every sin is a chair. So that's one sayyah. Okay, then another sin is another chair. How many chairs do you need to fill earth? Unbelievable, billions, may Allah protect us. Once you're done filling earth, are you done? Yes, I'm done, yeah, you're pretty bad, may Allah forgive you, right? You're done, you filled earth, now go up, upwards to the sky. Did you see that? For those on the, on the, on the left side or, or my left, you go on top, second, third. لو بلغ الدنوبك عنان السماء So Allah says if your sins fill earth and then it grows till it reaches the skies. May Allah protect us. If you come to Allah with a sincere heart, believes in لا إله إلا الله, you seek the forgiveness of Allah, غفرت لك ذلك ولا أبالي I'll forgive all of that and I have no problem with it. So how can you give up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Can you help me salah? That's one sin. Ya Rabbi, khfir li. Rahat, rahat. May Allah forgive you all. Jazakallah khair, ya Salah. Allahu Akbar. May Allah bless you. Jazakallah khair. So here, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling you this. So yes, I'm saying this after you commit the sin. Don't lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before you commit the sin, I will push more on the fear side. Not the hope side. Scare you. Don't do it. Watch out. You did it. La yihdiq. La, don't give up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other thing about repentance to share with you, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us how much Allah loves it when you apologize, when you seek his repentance. Fir'aun had a chance, subhanallah, but he missed it. You don't miss it. One of the most remarkable statements from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about repentance, he gave the example of a man who was traveling. He had a camel filled with all his luggage, everything. Like he literally like traveled in a way that you can tell he's not coming back or so. Allah Ta'ala Alam. But all, all necessary means were on that camel. So as he was traveling, at one point in his travel by himself in the desert, he lost his camel. The camel was gone. And it went so fast, he couldn't catch up. He missed the camel, I can't believe it. And he was looking right and left. It was, went so far that his eyes can no longer capture the camel. Rasulullah said, This man felt so hopeless that it's a matter of time till, until I die. So he rested on a tree. And then he sat and he's waiting, Yantadiri al maut, waiting for death. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabb. And just to make, bring the meaning closer, someone traveling in a area maybe out on south dakota in a road that almost no one goes to your car is empty with gas your phone dies you have absolutely no connection with the world you're waiting there are no lights no one is passing by 
It's getting so bad, a whole day passed by, you slept in the car, second day you cannot believe not a single living being has passed by, no animals to try to slaughter and eat from, nothing, no water, no river, that's it, stay in the car, just death to come, there's nothing, khalas. So this man was leaning on the tree, and then he had a ghafwa, like he just, you know, like dozed off. And Allah knows for how long, but then when he opened his eyes, guess what did he saw? The camel. What? The camel. So when he saw it, grab the camel. Then he says, oh God, oh God, you are my slave and I am your Lord. Brother, astaghfirullah, uh, it's being recorded. We're going to cut this section. We're not going to cut this section because that's what he said. He said, God, you are my slave and I am your Lord. He made a mistake for how happy he was. Did you ever go through something like that? Were you ever so happy you acted weird? <laughs> uh, see now? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. You want to tell your story with us? I took a class one time. It's called heat transfer. I was a first year engineering student, and I wanted to take a summer class. And many summer classes were not available, so I took a third year engineering class. I didn't have the prerequisite, but I just T took a shot at it and they actually accepted my registration. So then I went to the final exam, throughout the whole semester, trying to study was very difficult. And when I did my finals, khalas, I'm doing the final exam, what do you usually do? They do attendance, correct? Just make sure that you're here. So then the professor was passing by, you know, each one, down, sign, sign, sign. Then when he came to me, he looked at my student number. He's like, 102? That's not third year students, they're 101. You see the number changes. What, what year are you? I'm like, I'm first year. I know I'm not supposed to be taking this class, but you guys accepted my registration. He's like, you need thermodynamics one. You need fluid mechanics one. There's no, you can't take this class. I'm like, it's finals. <laughs> You're gonna come on the final exam and the last, literally the last moment I'll ever see you. You never noticed 102 till now? <laughs> So the man, very quietly, he's like, I remember the brother was, uh, was from Iran. He's like, you know, okay, what? go ahead. So then my exam, and I'm nervous. What did I do? What did I get? What did I get? So I was in my computer science lab. You know, the grades are now, now uploaded after, I don't know, two weeks or so. You get an email. Your, art, your grades are on the portal, portal to classroom. So I go online and log in. Ya Rab, ya Rab. I, I get an A. I get an A. So I see my friend next to me. I'm like... I kissed him. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Right? Something I would never do in a normal situation. I'm just so happy. It's crazy. I know I kissed him in class. I mean, in the lab, it's fine. This man was so happy that the camel was back. He called God a slave and he called himself God. The boy you're saying, sharing this. Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah is happier than this man when you seek his forgiveness. Wallahi khalas. Now one more time. Allah is happier than this man. How happy is this man? You can't even calculate that, right? It's unbelievable. Allah is even more happy. Allah is happier than this man when you return back to Allah and you start a new page. When you ask Allah to forgive you for whatever you've done throughout your life. When you tell Allah, I'm going to quit this habit, I'm going to start to pray, I'm going to start to give in charity, I'm going to do better with mom and dad, I will no longer cheat, I will no longer be treacherous. Ya Allah, please forgive me. It's a new page. Allah doesn't just love what you did, Allah gets so happy. So let me add an element for your repentance and my repentance. Do it because God will be happy. Subhanallah. This is how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. The brother, can you, before we go to move on with Musa alayhi salam, and so can you tell us how do we repent? There's a lot of details. But to make it very simple for you, inshallah, repentance has to do with the past. You have to check box the present. Then you have to check box the future. Tamam? So past, present, and future. Anybody has any bottle of water? Any, anyone that can uh, pass uh, and is uh, vaccinated. Zakallah khair. Ahsantum. All right. So let's pretend. Can you come, Salah? Tizi? Ahsant, Ahsant. Salah's like, I'm never going to sit in the front again. Allah yabarik fikira. So let's say 
Salah is standing, so I'm like, hey, Salah, I really hope, let's say, pretend this is open. I'm like, Salah, and I actually throw, you know, pour water on him and pretend this is happening. So I'm like, oh my God, Salah, I am so sorry. You can tell if you don't judge my intention, but I'm really regretful, right? So I'm regretting what? The past, Sahih, are you guys with me? I'm regretting what? The past. I'm so sorry, oh my God. What would you say? Stop. Many people do this in real life. I'm so sorry, I'm speeding. Stop speeding. I know this is wrong. Okay, stop. Slow down, right? So the past, I have to feel regretful. I have to regret what I've done. The present, I have to stop. But is that enough? Is that enough? No, what do I have to do? I promise I'll never do it again. That's part of the future. What else part of the future? I got to make up for it. Take off your hood. I'm just <laughs> All right, let me go wash it for you. I'll buy you a new hoodie. Do something like that. got to make up for it. So that's the appropriate way to repent to God and to people in general. You regret what you've done. You stop the sin and you make up for it in the best way possible. And if it was a right you took from someone, you should return back the right. Jazakallah khair. Allah barik fiqh. Is that, inshallah, any questions about what I said? This is very critical. Any questions? Don't be shy, inshallah. Return or return the water. Ahsanti, <laughs> ahsanti. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here you go. I give her an extra bottle, sah? Ahsanti. I give you the right back. Ahsanti, ahsanti. May Allah bless you all. Say ameen. Ahreen. Ahsanti. Okay. So, Fir'aun is gone. Is he RIP? Is he resting in peace? La, la. What about his people that supported him? Not at all. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Fir'aun and his people. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem wa atba'nahum fi hadhihi dunya la'nah Fir'aun was punished in this life by not seeing or experiencing God's mercy. So you know his uh, pyramids, his gold, his jewelry and all that flashy stuff it actually never brought him any joy. For those who never know, now they know. Right? Now we know. Allah says, While they were alive, torturing his wife Asi, as we mentioned in the last session, torturing the believers, cutting the magician's hands and legs. Remember last session? All of that stuff, you think he was strong and powerful? No, Allah says, he was having the emptiness in his heart. Allahu Akbar. Not just that. We know clearly Allah also caused him to drown. He said to the people, look, oh people of Egypt and Bani Israel, the rivers are flowing from underneath me. He was bragging. Then what happened? Allah made the river flow from above him. Subhanallah. So that's his punishment. La, no, 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 no. No, such people don't end right here with the pain that they've caused. Their pain, the cause that to people is so magnificent, so evil, so bad that the punishment, as we're speaking, 2020, December 10th, he's being punished. Fir'aun is in the grave being punished and all those around him that supported him. Allah says in the Quran, Day and night, right now, he's seeing hellfire. He's in pain. And all those who supported him, all these millenniums, all these millenniums. Adab upon adab. May Allah protect us. Ya Rabbil Alameen. The scholars use this ayah as one of the biggest proof of the punishment of the grave. And we thank Allah for its existence. Why? To punish those who deserve it and to remind us to be protected from it in this life. May Allah protect us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One time he went to the grave and he was very emotional and he told the people, the Sahaba, seek Allah's refuge from the punishment of the grave. So seek it. A'udhu billah min adhab al-qabr. Oh Allah, protect us from the punishment of the grave. An-nar yu'raduna alayha ghuduwan wa'ashiyya. Because in the grave you get to see your spot in the afterlife. If you're of the believers, you will see your paradise. May Allah make it all for you. The disbelievers, the evildoers, they will see their spot in hellfire. So brother, I have a quick question. Would it be possible for a believer, believer to actually have a punishment in the barzakh, the grave period, which is after death and before resurrection? Is it possible? What do you guys think? A mu'min. 
It's possible in the grave? Subhanallah. And the answer is yes. Do you have an example of a sin? Anybody can assist me, inshallah? What sin? Say that one more time. Um, like getting into haram stuff like alcohol and drugs and stuff like that. Ahsanti, ahsanti. Excellent point. When people start causing harm to themselves and to others severely, there is a chance that they may be punished in the grave. Unless Allah wills otherwise. To give you a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the Sahaba, the greatest generation ever, to pass it down to us eventually. He says, تَنَزَّهُوا مِنَ bowl. Take care when you use the bathroom. Don't smear all over your body. Take it serious. It's not something you're going to just leave. No, take it serious. Why, Ya Rasulullah, like you're talking about how we use the bathroom and how clean we got to be. لِأَنَّ عَامَّةِ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ مِنَ bowl. Because the majority of the punishment of the people in the grave are people who cared less about how they use the bathroom. It messes up their body. It goes all over the place. I don't care. Subhanallah. May Allah protect us. So this is an example of the punishment. One time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I shared it before, I share it again. He passed by two graves that were being punished. Two graves. So he came and he placed like a leaf. To him, Allah will cause the person in that grave who was being punished to relieve him a little bit from that punishment. So Rasulullah said, these graves are being punished, but not something that is major. But why is it not major? Why get punished in the grave? It's not major in their thoughts, in their opinion. They thought it was not a big deal. And one of them was the one who was gossiping and backbiting. May Allah protect us. So there's Adab al-Qabr that exists. Say, what should you and I do not to be like Fir'aun and his people and be punished in the grave? There's so many things you can do, right? You guys help me out, tell me a couple points. What can I do for me not to be punished in the grave for the sins that I've committed in my life? Tell me something. Excellent. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Specific good deeds. If you do, it will protect you from the punishment of the grave, such as reading Surah Al-Mulk. Excellent, that's a chapter in the Quran. Fantastic, Allahumma barik. What else can I do? I don't want to get punished in the grave. What can I do? Excellent. Go the easy route. Say, I'm sorry now. What are you waiting for? What guarantee do you have that you will live till tomorrow? When will you return the right back? Yalla, istaghfir al-an. Seek Allah's repentance. But what other ways Allah may utilize to have our sins forgiven and not be punished in the grave? Go ahead. Ahsanti, there's two words. Some say istighfar, say Allah forgive me, Allah forgive me, Allah forgive me. But some sins require a change of life, repentance. And what's tawbah? Tawbah is to bust a U-turn. That's what tawbah means. Bro, repent. Okay, you bust a U-turn. You were at the wrong side, you were doing wrong action, so you turn. So you turn your back against the wrong. And where do you go? To the good. May Allah protect us. And there's much more, such as when people go through hardships and calamities, Right? Maybe right now you're not comfortable in your seat. Sins are being erased. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no one faces ham, wala gham, an anxiety or stress or depression, except it makes your sins fall like tree leaves fall during the fall. Until you walk on earth and not having a single sin on you. Allahu Akbar. You reach perfection. There are actually people living on earth. They have no sins on them for how much toughness they've experienced in their life. May Allah protect us. But you may say, Tab, okay, like I know like a really good person who's suffering. Does that mean they were really that bad? <laughs> La. A group of people, may Allah protect you all, Ya Rab. Let's just excuse, excuse my example. A group of people may be in a car, five passenger, all occupied. They get in a car accident. They all have the same physical result. But all five may have a different spiritual result. So some, it's a punishment from Allah. Others, it's for them to know their true colors. Others, to elevate their status in paradise. Others, to wake them up and return back to Allah. It's the same accident. But you don't know why someone went through it. Allah knows best. And then maybe you get, get a feeling of it and what you've done in your life. 
So avoid judging people oh, because of this. That's why they're facing it. It happened a couple weeks ago. Someone was having a problem. I was in a gathering. And the guy called me after the meeting. He said, do you think this person is suffering because of something they've, wrong that they've done? Is that a possibility? Yes. But you have to watch how you address people. May Allah forgive us. You have to be very watchful. So here, that's their punishment in the grave. Khalas, the day of resurrection happens. Fir'aun and his people are resurrected. All of us are coming back to life. Alhamdulillah. Our parents who passed away, great-grandparents, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Musa alayhi salam, everyone is up. Khalas, Fir'aun is uh, all these thousands of years. It's pretty much over, right? No. There's adab for him in the afterlife on the day of judgment. Not just that, Allah says, وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةَ about Fir'aun and his people, and on the Day of Judgment, Take him and his people, supporters, to the worst of punishments. May Allah protect us. So those who've been oppressed, depending on what you're going through, may Allah protect you all. This gives some relief when you want to get your right back, but you're hopeless. Even the system or the government or people of royalty, they're blocking and you feel you're choked. La wallah, the day will come where you get your right back and let's see who will get choked. May Allah protect us, Ya Rab. So they go to hellfire and Allah tells you what Fir'aun and his people will do. The followers will tell Pharaoh, ready for this? They said, Inna kunna lakum taba'an, fahal antum mughnuna anna nasiba min an nar. We used to be with you, Pharaoh. We hooked you up, we voted for you. We know you don't deserve it, right? We supported you with our money, donations, everything. We made sure we, you were able to kick away Musa and kill the magicians and ruin your wife's life, everything. You can hook us up. So what does Pharaoh tell them and his people? Inna kullun fiha, we're all here, buddy. There's nothing I can help you today. Inna allaha. Allah has judged between the people. There's nothing I can do. All control is in the hands of Allah. They're blaming one another. Oh, you took me to hell. It's all because of you. No, no. I never forced you. You listen. No, you, you, you. Just like kids and adults. Kids and adults. A group of kids are talking. Okay, in the, in the classroom. You know what? You know what I'm going to do over the weekend? I'm going to go sledding, inshallah. With them. Hey, no one talks. Who was talking? Okay, no. The teacher's writing on the board. You know, when it's going to sledding, inshallah, and then my cousin is going to come from Canada. Yeah, they opened up the borders. They did, right? And, and then the teacher, all of it slick. You. No, it was him talking. No, it was him. You guys were friends. You guys were boys. Okay, the weekend, sledding, come over. I'm going to call your mom. No, he was talking. He was like, kids, right? And that's how the enemy is. Just like, Horrible people, may Allah protect us in, in hellfire. May Allah not make our kids there, well, our parents, our siblings, I mean. And sometimes even adults do that once they get caught. How many times you watch a surveillance footage of people robbing a store? There's a driver, there's two people in the, behind, and they're having the bags. And so the police comes, the driver goes, and they, they stay in the convenience store. <laughs> carrying the ATM machine, hey buddy. Uh, where is, where's the friendship? And we made a promise, we never let go of each other. Wallah al -Azim. And they swear by Allah, Allahu Akbar. Right? It's done. You know, I know Alhamdulillah brought a smile to many of you, but th this is a reality you have to watch. Don't sell your, uh, your Lord over horrible relationships. If you want to take this example to the next level, last one, inshallah. There is a family somewhere in the world, okay, in which uh, the daughter, college student, was taking the jewelry and money of her parents without her parents knowing. So the parents were like, where's my jewelry? Where's my money? Someone's stealing it. And then that daughter was like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. We have to put a lock in this house. They put a lock, whatever they do, still getting robbed. They're all like thinking, who is it? And the daughter's taking all of this. Something that we got involved in, may Allah protect us, Ya Rab. She was passing it down to someone, quote unquote, a haram relationship. From a man, it's a wrong relationship, whether he's Muslim or not, doesn't make any difference. It's a wrong relationship. But to add to this, someone who does not fear Allah, no love to Islam and makes fun of it. And he was someone who was into drugs and horrible habits. And she was helping him out. And you know what, take this. And he's continued to do what he's doing. He never repented. It's not like he wants to change. So she did it at the expense of her family. Her mom was about to lose her mind. How is that possible? Put a ring camera outside. This whole time it was from the inside. May Allah protect us. The tears on that mother's face. 
You sold the gold and jewelry that I was saving and I was gifted from your dad 20, 30 plus years because some loser. Why would you do something like that? To ask us, maybe we would have helped even more. Talk to us, what are you doing? SubhanAllah. And guess why am I sharing this story here? Because it was only a few months later that guy, quote unquote, dumped that girl. He took everything and he left. So she lost the family and she lost the guy. But alhamdulillah, the mom will always be there as long as Allah blesses her life. May Allah protect us, Ya Rab. So be aware, these stories of Fir'aun and his people is not something just entertainment, it's something for you to truly reflect on. May Allah protect us, Ameen Rabbil Alameen. Now, Bani Israel, we mentioned they were leaving through the gap that was opened between the two mountains of water, escaping as fast as they can. And they saw Fir'aun drowning and his body floating. They saw with their own eyes the blessings Allah bestowed upon them. Allah helped us. Allah beat Pharaoh. It's something no human being can imagine. Literally, if, besides Islam, no one can logically put it together that this man can be defeated. It's impossible. But Allah defeated him without the need of human beings. Allahu Akbar. Allah has his soldiers. The ocean is Allah's soldier. The wind is Allah's soldier. The mud is Allah's soldier. So they saw all miracles of Allah. And right when they turned their backs towards that sea, and they want to begin a new life away from Pharaoh, what happened, brothers and sisters? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we learn from him and from the Quran, that when they walked, they just start walking after this miracle. فَأَتَوْا عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ يَعْكُفُونَ عَلَىٰ أَصْنَامٍ لَهُمْ they saw a group of people worshipping idols. Something looks very fancy, like you start worshipping it. They're devoted to it. Not Bani Israel, some other group of people. Who, what's their name? Doesn't matter. Someone was doing this. So when Bani Israel saw this, that's pretty cool. Okay. All right, okay, okay. Musa, can you hook us up with some idols? True story. Musa, can you get us idols just like them to worship? Musa, make us a God just like them, please. We want to we we do idol worshiping again. <laughs> this is unbelievable. You just saw Allah's miracles. And you want to go back to your old habits? A father, for example, who helped his son go through يعني, the re relief process from a hardship he was, he was doing whether it was drinking or drugs, he did everything he can to help his son out. And he spent and he paid all his debt and all his loan, everything. And he went, took his kid to the best hospital. It was going great. Alhamdulillah, rehab is phenomenal. It took months and years. And in the moment this son leaves the hospital, he sees a group of people doing exactly what he did five years ago. He's like, I want to do this again. It, it kills. It's painful. May Allah protect us. It's, and by the way, we have to appreciate the humanity of people not everyone can leave a bad habit so quickly. So may Allah make it easy for us. You know, when I was putting this together, you know what came to my mind? The magicians, last session, on, in the day, they were the worst of people after Pharaoh. At the night, they were martyrs and righteous. Some people change the bad habit over something that they see. Others don't. But when you take the means, you can have to believe you can change it. That's my bottom line. So no one ever, please, wallah, I'm saying it with respect, no picking any individually, but in general, no one should ever say, I try to get closer to God, but things are not working out. Impossible. Because there's two options. One is haram, which is like God broke his promise, or you're just not doing it right. So when you go through something like that, you really want to change a bad habit, you're really trying your best, it's not working, it's like, what should I do to make sure I let go of that bad habit? Don't claim God is not helping you out because it's impossible. What's your proof? God said, if you walk to me, I'll have an open door policy. No, but that's pretty cool. That would be excellent, actually. That would be very nice, right? Many of you will never see the president in your life. Not even eye contact. A real note. Can you send him a letter? You think he will read it? You think? What's the chances? So... Allah says, if you walk to Allah, if Allah tells you, I will walk to you. Man, that's so humbling, so amazing. What, what kind of merciful God He is. I walk, He will walk to me, meet me halfway? La. Allah says, you walk to me, I will run to you. But just take what? 
step. Just take a step, I don't know what to do. Yeah, top, get up. Customize your resume. Do something. Apply. Call. Email. Just do something. I, uh, take the action. Allah will run to you. And that's a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these people should be trying harder and harder. Now, when they asked Musa to build an idol for them, he has to be honest. There are certain mistakes you can brush off. Agreed? Many times they tell us with our children, I know some kids, my kids are here. You know what? If they do small things, then don't make a big deal. It's okay. Wait for the big ones, right? May Allah protect us. May Allah never have big ones, <laughs> right? And address it. But there's certain mistakes you have to address on the spot right away. And to Musa alayhi salam, this was a mistake he has to reject. He has to address. He says, "Innakum qawmun tajhalun." You bani Israel asking for this. This is something extremely ignorant and horrible for you. Watch what you wish for. Then Musa alayhi salam said. You think these people are happy? Musa is saying, you think these people are happy? Okay, they're doing all this stuff, worshiping, give up, giving up their lives and their money. They're putting like a hundred dollar next to the idol, hoping they get cured. And then they wipe something like this and then hoping they get a child. And someone who is, for example, ha not having enough money, so they put five dollars, hoping somehow they get a bigger return. It happens till this day, yes or no? Seeking blessings from idols or whatever the case may be. Not just that. There's no benefit in what they did. Actually, they wasted their resources. That's how bad. Then he says, You guys want a God other than Allah. And Allah preferred you out of all beings. He preferred you guys. How dare you? How? How can you go thank someone else when he didn't thank the one who provided you with the ability to thank? How can you use a blessing against Allah? That's your thank you back to Allah? That's how you say thank you back to him? By wanting to worship idols? Subhanallah. Rasulullah went through the exact same thing. Exact same thing. And he even quoted Musa alayhi salam. Thousands of years later, a group of people recently, freshly accepting Islam. They're going to the battle known as Hunayn. On their way to the battle, fresh new Muslims, they saw a tree, very famous tree called Thatu Anwat. It's a tree with a lot of branches. People used to uh, hang their swords on it to be able to you know, think that the sword is now going to perform better. The sword will be sharper, more accurate, whatever. Nonsense, obviously. So when these new Muslims, they came, Hadithi Ahd Islam, they saw this, they said, Ya Rasulullah, get us a tree where we can get blessings from it just like them. What blessings? We just destroyed the idols in Mecca. There were no blessings. You know there's no blessings in these things. But sometimes when you see something, it clicks. Just yesterday, just yesterday, last night, subhanAllah, night my nose, I just remember, just last night. I was talking to a brother, mashallah, very well educated about, you know, uh, dieting and things like that. He said, one of the main things to help improve your diet, one of the best ways to avoid sugar is for you not to see it. An expert, avoid eye contact. <laughs> uh, Nutella, astaghfirullah, <laughs> like Gardena, oh my God. Right, avoid eye contact because it'll trigger, subhanallah. So they saw the tree, like, oh, I want a tree too. Right, may Allah protect us. So. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Subhanallah, Allah is free from all of this. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than everything and anything. The believer gets hurt. Subhanallah. Doesn't celebrate that. He said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that's exactly what happened to Musa. <laughs> and that's how we should be in our lives. We go through something, that's what Musa went through. What did he do? One, two, and three. You know, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he went through this, he said exactly what Musa said, his brother, alayhi salam. And he told them, this is ignorant stuff. They don't benefit you. It's a waste of resources, etc. But there's two things I want to share with you that is very critical. Musa, alayhi salam, did he tell Bani Israel, you guys are kuffar now. You guys apostated. Okay, repeat after me. Oh my God, we got to do this again. Repeat after me. Ashhadu, ashhadu, Allah, Allah, no. Right? You have to watch out when you call your brother and sister. Oh, they left Islam. Sometimes people get too excited 
and don't think you're free from it. Wallah, I don't think you're free from it. We've seen it with our own eyes. A very small number of people attending a talk, you know, getting, loving it, enjoying it, asking questions, learning. Excellent, great job, great job, Allahu Akbar. Okay, month, two, three, year, two. They stop showing up. Why? Ah, uh, man, I don't know what to tell you, Brother Majid. You used to always show up, what's happened? Nah, bro. Why? I think you're a kafir. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Why? Why do you say that? Because I saw you one time throwing a quarter in downtown Detroit into a pond. Okay, so if I throw a quarter in the pond, yeah, and you threw that quarter hoping that you will receive much more money. And this is shirk. Ya yeah, Habibi, I was walking by the fountain, the quarter fell. Kafarni <laughs> called me a kafir. And even if I did it, for that you have to verify and understand. Watch out from calling other believers kuffar. We gotta watch out. I, I threaten you and I threaten myself through that religious guidance of Allah. Not actual threat in the physical, through Allah's guidance. How is that? Spiritually speaking. Rasulullah gave us this threat. He said, rajulun kaffara akhi. Look at the kalam. Any man, or obviously woman, calls their brother, Allahu Akbar, calls their brother. You know them to be a Muslim at one point. So now you see if you think you call him a kafir, bihi ahaduhuma. Then one of you has to be a kafir. I'm confused. Okay, two people. One guy overzealous. Like, man, this guy. You know what? He saw him doing something wrong. Throwing the quarter in the fountain. Okay? So he said, you're a kafir. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the moment someone says it, that you have disbelieved, you have apostated, one of them has to be a kafir. Has to be. So, if I was incorrect, what happens? You become the kafir. You see what you're saying here? Allah will not ask you, why did you not call so-and-so a kafir? Allah will not ask you. But Allah will ask you, why did you call them? If you did speak up. There's certain times where you have to speak up, for sure, there's no doubt. But in just walking around labeling people, well, brother, let me tell you something. I saw my mom getting this blue eye, okay? And we had this, my little beautiful little brother, we just came to this life, my mom came and put the blue eye on him. Why? To protect him from envy and evil eye. Is that not shirk? Yeah, it's a form of shirk. They're thinking something may have that power besides Allah, yes. But see, so I told them, and they still didn't, so they are kuffar. I'm not praying behind them. I'm not washing their bodies. I'm not praying janazah. No charity after that to them. All this stuff. When you tell someone he's a kafir, murtad, apostated, you strip them from many rights. Beware of that. Do you know whether they understood what you said or not? Are you sure they comprehended you? I don't know their brains. Khalas uskut. Did they under, maybe the way you're speaking, maybe you quoted it, maybe you said it incorrectly. I said it correctly, bro. I actually opened the book. I actually went on YouTube, I played the video. You don't know if they understood it. Pay attention, watch out. So that's something I want to share with you. Neither Musa or Muhammad Sallallahu called these people kuffar. They did not know. Maybe they weren't paying attention. Slipped. Let's go back again. Seek forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The other thing and the last thing, inshaAllah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said something very powerful. May make people a little bit uncomfortable if we go into depth. But for the sake of time, we'll not go into depth. But he told the Sahaba, the new Muslims, now Muhammad Sallallahu he said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَتَرْكَبُنَّ سُنَّةَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ You will follow exactly the people of the past. Step by step. You guys are going to imitate the people of the past. So he's like warning them, don't do that. And it'll happen. Don't be of those people. So the Sahaba said, who are you referring to that we will eventually, some Muslims may imitate? Hal taqsa, do you mean al-Yahud wa nasara the Jews and the Christians? We're going to eventually, some of us will imitate them. He said, woman idhan, then who else? They will be the two primary groups. Muslims, whether complex uh, uh, issues and then th getting confused and shubha and just start to imitate, thinking success is through that. You have to watch out. It's a very big topic. Maybe one day we can do a workshop about what are the restrictions and the rules of imitation. This is a good talk, inshallah. Maybe one day we go deep into it. But let me give you a rule of thumb. Ready? Rule of thumb. 
if you hold tight to this rule of thumb, you're going to save yourself a lot of possible imitations. Ready, inshallah? Never imitate a ritual of any other religion. Anything, it's a ritual. Even if the whole world does it. So what's an example, example ritual? I know some Christians may say it's actually bid'ah innovation, and they actually don't believe in it, but let's say the cross, the cross. It's a ritual. There's a rituals revolving around it. As a Muslim, you don't wear it, but you can't judge my intentions. This is an example that your intentions do not matter. Are you guys with me? You wore it just to proper da'wah, you know, to confuse the guy. He's like, oh, hey, how are you? You know, did you read the Bible? Actually, I'm a Muslim. Oh, psych, right? What you, what so I just get to open up some da'wah opportunity. Don't use no da'wah opportunity through the haram. So this cross, for example, as Muslims, we are prohibited from wearing it. The, the hat that some of the Jewish people wear, right? It's something known to be a ritual about that religion. You should not wear it. What else? Just one last yani, point from this. Even if, it's, if it was a natural act and not religious, a natural act. But hold on, breathe in, breathe out. If it was a natural act, like baking a cake. Oh, extreme. I felt it. Well, I felt it in extremist. Hold on, yeah. If there's a special cake a religion does, like it's just a random cake that is, I don't know, like blue, green, and three dots of yellow. Nothing to do with religion. But whoever has this cake is known to be, for example, a Christian. Are you guys with me? Whoever does this cake is known to be a Jewish. No one does it except them. You don't do it. Unless down the road this cake is so delicious, Mishad, if it goes around the world and they start franchising and the Christians and the Jews and the Buddhists and the atheists, all they do, khalas, then it's no longer attributed to these religious people. I hope that point was very clear, inshallah. So please be, be careful. Avoid doubtful matters. Avoid it. It's okay. Ruined. Why would you be in Dearborn and put a Christmas tree? Why on your beautiful store would you put something that resembles a religion? We respect the people that follow it. Don't get me wrong, we respect. We have guests from them. But I have to be honest with them. I can't sugarcoat now and they say, Ashadu, Ashadu, okay, you know what I said last Friday? It was all fake. I can't do that. This is an amana. Your parents trust me with this. Allah entrusted me with this. It's an amana. What are you what are we doing for? And Allah has to think about it. Will this really bring you business? In these lights, these things that you know it's connected. Are you calling me a kafir? I didn't say that. You have to be watchful. But think twice, yeah. There are certain things that are clear. This is not what Muslims do. So be honest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah guide us to the truth. May Allah make us strong. May Allah make us courageous. Especially if you're in Dearborn. <laughs> and most of your customers are like, you know what? I'm not going to this place. That's what actually may happen. Sales will not go well, subhanAllah. So may Allah protect you. May Allah honor you. May Allah bless you. Say Ameen. Bani Israel were having a dead body carried. What? Bani Israel had a dead body carried. Dignified man. Who's this? What's this body? What in the world did you just come up with? All that after the break, inshallah.